you're you're going to be learning a lot about these classes. So you, if you qualify on a class that's not necessarily your main, you might be able to you know learn something about yourself and your play style. But from that, you're also going to be able to compete with some of these best competitors in the game right now on these individual classes. Absolutely, and we, it, even just that experience alone will give you valuable knowledge from going forward in your play to learn how to develop yourself and where you can, how you can elevate your strategy going into Midgar once more. Let's get this done way. All right, we seem to have a nice dispersion on. We seem to have a nice dispersion on players. A couple of people dropping pretty early. One in Desolate East. A couple of people dropping nearby to their ruins next to each other. They've already started to cut it out there, I think. Like that. I won my ruins. So. Ah, that is that is you over there. Pink Teddy is Pink Teddy, Pink Teddy is on it, right? <laughs> Leave me alone, Pink Teddy. No, Pink Teddy. Doesn't count. Get away from Pink Teddy! Get away! <laughs> oh. oh, I can't go to a server, okay. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't count, Teddy. No, Pink Teddy, I'm giving you a minus one on your kill score. Let's move. It's a penalty, killing the host. Let's go, Premium, guys. you got to take yourself out then, unfortunately. If you were on Monk, you have to take yourself out of the match. Please. Let's move. Let's not, uh, don't give out any kills. Take yourself out. And we will get you into the next match. We're going to do one more match. I apologize. I know, it, it stinks, but those are the rules. There's a Cerulean Drake nearby that can help you end your uh, existence. Did we get any other? Uh, did we get any other on the wrong class? Just PH and me. Oh, I was on board, yeah. so that's fine. Okay, let's move. Okay. Just PH. All right, we figured we're it going out. We're going to. We're going to tune in here with legit vocals, the previous kill leader, and we're going to see what his strategy is going to be going into this opening. Seems he has opted to take a more of a, uh, a country start, grabbing Arrow first, managing to pick let's up move. Sparkles, his trusted companion. And I'm going to ride around and take some of these chests that are in the more hard-to-reach locations. Now, I do want to point out, he did mention in the chat that he's going to change up his strategy going into this one. Because, like you said, different uh, different tournament atmospheres uh, are going to create like different this. play styles. And we're going to see different, like I said, Pink Teddy had a strategy here. So we'll see if that is the solution to these qualifiers. Yep. Neil Noir coming and buzzing by the myth, but I don't think he was able to spot him out as he was hiding just Let's inside move. of the Tonberry fight zone. I do want to say, though, when we get to the grand final, it break. is not going to be best single score. It is going to be a cumulative five-game uh, series. So you're going to have to be able to uh, win over the entire um, sorry, five-game tournament. So that will be a different format when we get there. It is single score for these qualifiers. That way we can get as many people qualified as possible. Oh, I didn't realize the Jifocles had found somebody. I wasn't able to see that. But uh, apparently he has pounced on Joe Bursky, uh, taking his first kill of this game. Let's see, anybody else close uh, to each other? I like this. Seal Noir, Zemeth and Seal Noir are still hovering around, playing in the desolate areas. And nearby, could you see who that is nearby? Number two is that Lodi has decided to make berth in the desolate areas and try to loot up whatever they can and get some experience from killing the monsters outside of here. All right, let me get the kill sheet up here. As I said, Pink Teddy is going to be down one kill as he had on here. So we did have 14 people drop into this one as the puppet does have a kill as well. Who did the puppet take down? Did you see? I did not, unfortunately. Must Zim have been Creator, because Creator is the only other person in here. Huh. Alrighty, then. Unfortunately, I missed that kill even on the kill feed. Zincroft and General are spraying closer and closer to each other. That is a, a but... big... Creator is a big name going down early in this match. Yes, 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 it is. That was my teammate for the Grand Slam, too. He had a uh, wonderful performance during one of those games. Almost managing to clutch out a, a victory 1v5. Creator was all over the place uh, at Fight Night last night, too. Mm-hmm. All right, Zemith and Seal Noir have finally locked eyes on each other and exchanged some gunfire at medium range. Zemith taking a little bit of damage as he hides back behind the wall. Seal Noir attempting to flush him out with a fireball that stops just mm -hmm. short of his cover. Zima taking advantage of Seal Noir's retreat to throw down a couple of more bullets, not managing to land any damage on him, unfortunately. 
but that was a short engagement of Steel Noir's ops to go and loot a little bit more instead of taking any more poke. Let's with move. House of Greenery, let's check in with General. As General and Zencross are getting a little bit close to each other. General just summoning their bird. If he goes toward too much further, he's going to be able to see Zencross down there, but he seems content. Well, he seems to be confused about where he wants to take his next step. Zincross and the buildings nearby taking some loot, but not on a bird himself. So, already being able to hear General's chocobo, is he going to decide to take this engagement? He jumps on his bike. No, excuse me. He jumps into the building. General has likely heard some footsteps right around here. He might be looking to take his first fight in this same game, too. Indeed, he hops off his chocobo and Zincross and General lock eyes each other on each other as the Mako closes in rapidly. Lugray is putting out the first bit of damage on Zen Cross. As General takes advantage of the confusion, lays a little bit of damage, and leaving, while leaving his sh warrior shield behind, and you get that once per level. So he's gonna have to wait till he levels up again to take that defensive bar barrier. Zen Cross taking a little bit of, of pressure as he attempts to come down and chase the chase. General taking massive damage. Both of them managing to critically wound the other as the Mako is ticking down on their damage further and further and further. There's not going to be a whole lot longer in this fight as the timer is ticking down. Zencross jumping over the fence and trying to close this distance, dodging past the blizzard. It's a little bit more of combat rifle fire. He's using huge damage. General blows himself up with that fire. Zencross coming into the beautiful sword slash to finish it off and take the kill. Hopefully he'll be able to get out of the woods here. He's not in this clear just yet. He is quite far away from where the ring is going to take yeah, him to safety. Had to wait for the death box there, or for the thunder to go away to get to the deck box, and that might be the difference if there's not a potion in there. Well, and to avoid having our green tinted vision for too long, we'll check in with see what's going on with the other competitors. Let's see. I'll keep a look on uh, Zinsasi. Yeah. So he did have a potion. He has rush. So he probably will be getting out of there quite easily. Seal Noir and uh, Vigraf are in the same location. Vigraf opening fire on a Tonberry, finishing him off. Seal Noir is nearby and is going to hear this gunfire. Is he going to want to take this engagement? Or is Vigraf going to be able to slide away? Zytera hot on the chase. Is not wrong. Yeah, she's coming in on a bike right now. Driving in slowly, Vigraf is hearing the bike passing by. Seal Noir is hearing the bike passing by. Zaytera is just going to pass on by the station, apparently, on her way towards the desolate areas. Now, I know Zaytera does not normally play Warriors, so she's probably going to take her time getting into the final phase. Absolutely. Meanwhile, the Corneo's matching. We have huge action going on as Ludokun runs away from the fight to Puppet and Legit Vocals in hot pursuit. Legit Vocals is going to want to be one taking his second kill of the game, seventh of the series. Puppet hops off the choke and leaves on a little bit of fire. Legit Vocal was forced back to the edge of the zone once again. Puppet laying a little bit more fire down as Ludo Kuhn leaves the scene of the crime. Legit Vocal's rotating around. Is he going to be able to pick off Zincross? Rotating. Oh, yeah, Zincross is on a bike. He definitely hears him driving into the zone in this direction. Monsters. Opted to leave Corneo's mansion as the puppet has gone after the chase for Ludo Kuhn instead. Suddenly, this drone feels very very slow as I make my way over to the puppet looking for his quarry but is not able to find anybody in this sector as everybody has already managed to go away. Ludokun taking huge damage on the other side of the mountain as he tries to take down Cloud once again and use that to his advantage. It worked out well for him last time but this time there's a bomb here so it's going to be a lot harder to be able to take Cloud easily. Monsters. Meanwhile Legit Vocals is getting ever closer to Zincross chasing him down on that bike and going to try and pick him up inside a support pillar. But no, the front one. The puppet and Zincross are crossing paths with each other at the moment. The puppet hopping off his bird and throwing down a bio to try and suppress him nice. off of the supply drop. Let's ride. Taking aim with a shotgun by mistake at first as Zincross loose the supply drop and scoots away got free as that bio was just too short to be able to poison him. Zincross, Vigraf fouls, driving next to each other meanwhile, and Vigraf is going to want to chase him down, running over a mana drive for a little bit of extra XP. This seems to be a high speed game as everybody's just zooming around the map at this point. Nope. Has Zinbon been able to stop and loot a while? As he drives in closer, running over another hedgehog pie and... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no! Almost taking the self-destruct from a bomb in the process. That might have been disastrous. Very close there. <laughs> the puppet hopping back on his chocobo and Vigarf attempting to run him over, but it's impossible to hit a chocobo in the air. Almost running over him that time as he hops off to take them cut more fire. Yinvan is just trying to run people over and finally hopping off his bike now that's chopped into the wall. There goes the Punisher activation. The puppet activates his melee first to get that first piece of damage. Yinvan hitting a beautiful arrow damage and chasing him up into the air. Both of them land back down and start meleeing each other, but Yinvan is able to get a little bit more damage off of that Punisher, but goes down first as the puppet manages to slink around behind and lay some beautiful attacks in. Meanwhile, who is that that has just arrived? There he is, Ludo Kuhn. He is apparently done with what he was doing over there and is engaged on this fight of a third party on the puppet. The puppet opting to poison himself in an attempt to poison Ludo Kuhn, but he has a jewel pinned, and all that did was give himself a disadvantage. Using Aroga to jump out of harm's way. No, Pogo up and down for a little bit as Cloud makes his appearance for the second time in this best of best tournament. Already trying to take down the puppet, but not managing to land that last attack. This is getting hot and heavy as we get closer into these final circles here. Meanwhile, Legit Vocals has found another party on the west side of Support Pillar. A couple of more players have made themselves known on top of the pipe of all places. Zaytera and Seal Noir are exchanging fire on the pipe. Seal Noir almost going you down as Zaytera lands some beautiful headshots, chasing after her very, very quickly. Legit Vocals has decided to open fire as Zaytera moves into the open. Seal Noir trying to throw a fire Let's to ride. keep him away. Legit Vocal pulls out the Inferno Cannon laser, almost managing to land some damage down, but it is insanely hard to aim from this far away. Seal Noir opting to hop down off of the pipes as the Terra turns to place on some fire on Legit Vocals, who's making his way over, throwing down some little more Infernal Cannon shots. There goes the giant laser, but Zaytera is going to keep herself in safety and just let Legit Vocals waste all that ammunition. All right, as this action goes on, we're going to hop into our high score of the day. These are our current qualifiers as this action continues on. We're going to go ahead and take the calls as well. Legit Vocals dashing in, Zaytera dashing in, both of them are missing sword slashes at each other as they dance, a dangerous that? dance of knives. Legit Vocals landing a beautiful fire, almost knocking Zaytera off the pipe, Fall them both falling off. Zaytera tries to, oh, he does manage to drink a potion on the way down and teleports up to the top of support pillar. Legit Vocals in hot pursuit, but unfortunately rushing through the teleport, not man coming up. And now they have engaged each other, Zaytera has a huge health disadvantage, Legit almost managing to finish off the kill right there, Zaytera plummets to the bottom of the support pillar once again, teleporting back up to the top and confusing Legit Vocals into striking at the air. Zaytera coming down to the second floor of support pillar, trying to find a little bit of loot, maybe she's running low on potions at this point, as Legit Vocals is content to wait up at the top, thinks that Zaytera is going to want to take this teleport again for another encounter, or is, yes, it's taunting Zaytera, who thinks is waiting at the bottom of the teleport for him. But Zaytera has already rotated away onto the main building, getting closer to Seal Noir, who is attempting to sneak around up there, but at that distance, even crouching, you're going to be able to hear you as Zaytera makes your way up the building. Not able to get up there, though, as it's just too high. Legit Vocals flying in with a fireball, hitting Zaytera as, on his way down and trying to finish her off with his beautiful melee attacks. Down she finally goes. Legit gets another point on the board. Seal Noir aiming himself down to try and finish off for that third party and trying to blow a thunder that does manage to do a little bit of damage to... I'm not sure who that is. The name has disappeared. Zen Cross arriving in on this action right now. Seal Noir is in a very domineering position. Ludo Kuhn just around the corner here waiting to ambush this mystery player. Oh, that is... Wait. Is that Ludo? I'm confused. There's a nameplate there. Zen Cross landing some nice damage, though, as he dashes into the warrior building. Legit Vocals coming around and trying to get some more kills to his name. Seal Noir just kind of taking his time and firing upon everybody that's partying down below. That is Ludo. Legit that is Ludo. Okay. So Seal Noir gets a little bit more damage and interrupts Legit po Vocals' potion. We got four Zen people all close to each other here now. This is intense. <laughs> this is a dangerous dance of death as... Zen Vocals tries to hit him with the fireball, getting lots of damage on Zen Cross with the melee weapon. Seal Noir coming in to finish him off. 
Ludo Conan, Legit Vocals, taking fire at CL Noir, who unfortunately misses the near fire behind Legit Vocals, climbing over the wall and trying to pop a potion and get whatever health back he can. Muds is up in a very un unprecarious situation, popping that Punisher to try and take Legit Vocals down and managing to land that final damage as a crit, taking Legit Vocals out of the competition at sixth place. Seal Noir and Ludo Kun is facing off against each other now. Seal Noir's Punisher comes off of duration. Dashing in to try and get some more damage on Ludo Kun. I unfortunately cannot see the damage, but a Punisher. Doesn't hit the stagger kill. Doesn't get it. Unfortunately, Braver misses. Seal Noir chasing after in hot pursuit. Ludo Kun sliding away and landing a fire in response. Coming out of the other side of the building. The puppet is cutting the window in half. I'm not able. I'm stuck inside of the building as Seal Noir is rotating around past me, dodging past a bio. The puppet is just throwing poison out left and right as Ludo Kun takes to the roof. The puppet slashing him down. Ooh, apparently, he has the threatened passive as you see that jewel pin and activating as he ta Ludo Kun takes a bath inside of the bio. The puppet getting knocked away by a beautiful melee combo off Seal Noir and Ludo Kun are in not very close proximity, slashing each other. Seal Noir takes huge damage. All he has to do is land a couple of shots. There goes the shotgun shell to finish Lu to finish Seal Noir off. Unreal. It's just non-stop here. We had four people at one point, then a fifth comes in, and it's just constant rotation of action here as these warriors are just going at each other left and right. Punisher making a domineering appearance right there, taking legit vocals out of the competition early on, but Rush may be in what ends up taking the win in the end. Unfortunately, I do not have a little to you. Nameplate. Let's see if I can swap over to this view and fix this glitch. Little Coon climbs up to the top of the roof. Yes, there goes his health. The puppet slides around inside to pick up a little bit more loot. Climbing out of the window as he's trying to find out where Little Coon is. Manages to track him down on top of the roof, but you don't want to climb on people. Manages to avoid any of the damage as Little Coon falls off the side of the building. Now they're just trading places with each other at this point, trying to get on the same level and land the first attack. Ludo Kun has a nice advantage from the roof, though, as the, the puppet and Ludo Kun exchange shotgun shells from afar. Ludo Kun taking a little bit of damage in response, but healing it up nicely before the puppet arrives. And stashing himself off of the roof, mounting a little bit of damage, taking a bath inside of another bio, as both of them are in hot, hot on each other's heels to try and get their names down and get more points on the board. Now they're, now they're mailing each other inside of the bio. A fire knocks him away. Arrow takes the kill, though. An arrow kill. A level three arrow. That was unreal. He was using it to get away, but a prime opportunity gets the kill with it. I don't think he was using it to get away. He backed around the side of the container. He intentionally used that to finish off the kill. And the level three arrow does almost 80, 90 damage. So it was enough to be able to take out nice. Ludo, who might not have had as much health as he wished he did in that situation. That was the puppet with three kills to his name in this competition. Such a good uh, arrow placement there. Unreal. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful arrow kill. The puppet coming in here after playing the wrong class in the first game. Really coming in and showing what they could do on Warrior in this second game. I, I consider myself impressed already. The final three competitors are making their way into the zone. Let's check in with Pink Teddy and see how he's been doing. I'm sure he took another bath for a long while to get all the loot in the world. So he comes flying in on Bumble Boo, already spotting out to Puppet and sliding around for the flank and kill. Or maybe he's... Nope, he is still in looting mode and he's going to look around for some chests. <laughs> Pink Teddy is always in looting mode. <laughs> you got to watch out, though. That zone is nice. right there, Pink Teddy. <laughs> Nice. In the meantime, in the final circle, Master Lodi has already arrived. They're trying to get a dominant position on top of the cliff, on top of his mm. chocobo, but sliding off of the curved surface, he's not able to quite grab purchase. <laughs> that Master Lodi trying sneaking to into, into the uh, into the final, or I mean, into the final three here with no kill so far. <laughs> Master Lodi making his way further and further up the mountain, but not able to make that jump and plummets back down to the bottom, resetting his progress. Really wants the that high ground. <laughs> I wonder how much stamina his Chocobo has left. It can't be much. The puppet Monsters. on his way over as well. There goes the Chocobo summon as well. It might not help you in this final ring going into this. This is a very wide open zone with only the corner of this building inside of it. Pink Teddy taking his time at the supply drop. 
the puppet rotating around, <laughs> trying to get a nice view on the final circle to see if anybody's already made their way over. But Lodi found him first and has already opened fire, landing a nice shot with the Mark V as the puppet is dodging, bobbing, and weaving, trying to get away from this gunfire. He? He's rotating around to the zone, though, but if he takes too long, he might find himself pinned by the Mako behind cover. Pink Teddy, in the meantime, is content to play the extremely long game and is slowly <laughs> making his way in from the distance. <laughs> See Pink Teddy again in the final three after taking the win in the first matchup. Yep, the puppet managing to cross the open ground safely as Lodi had his attention elsewhere, probably looking over at Pink Teddy. Making his way in. Steadily closer to the final zone and complete safety. Lodi is not taking advantage of his position, keeping pressure out inside of the danger zone. I, I, I consider this a big misplay not utilizing his position to his advantage. King Teddy's on a double or two game whenever he won, but the couple is on a two. Now he's just in strike with the final zone. I feel like maybe Lodi is going to take with a strategy here of trying to let these two fight it out and then pick off the kill at the end. Which is not a bad strategy with the app, but he is spotted out here. The puppet, the puppet puts down some very nice fire up at him. Yes, he is taking revenge for that damage from before. His master Lodi is still looking to take down that chocobo instead of engaging the puppet. I wonder how much da how much health it has left as Pink Teddy himself has taken a couple of shots. Popping a potion in the middle of the open. That is a very risky maneuver. <laughs> You can, you can run around and dodge as much as you want, but if you're running around in the open like this trying to waste some gunfire, it's going to take forever, and you run the risk of losing your chocobo and losing your mobility in the open and really taking some heavy damage because of it. Now it looks he like Master that. Lodi is now taking some shots, but he's going to have to leave that mountain as this circle gets closer. Absolutely. He's got some time to relax for now, but it's not going to take long before he has to leave. Swapping over to his lethal gauge to lay a little bit more damage down on the puppet as he rotates into the building into safety with fire hot on his heels, but not managing to do anything. Meanwhile, Pink Teddy has managed to make his way to the back of the building on his chocobo to puppet inside on the second floor and tossing a bio into the corner. Perhaps he thought someone was going to try to climb the window. He tried, so he knew Teddy was up top. He's trying to bio <laughs> Teddy through it. Or he, he thought uh, Teddy was nearby. Anyway. I see. So, Lodi is being forced down off of the cliff finally as... Pink Teddy on his chocobo is hiding around behind his wall. The puppet is gonna gonna be in for a very unpleasant surprise if he tries to stay inside of that building for too much longer. The puppet put down some very nice shots on the Lodi as Lodi tried to jump down there. Yes. Yes, Lodi took some nice little bit of damage there. So the puppet rotates out of the building. Lay sound prone, unfortunately, due to the controller glitch, taking a huge amount of damage in the process. Pink Teddy hops up to try and finish off that damage. Both of them have jewel pin and so the bio doesn't matter. The puppet flies away and pogo's on the arrow. Pink Teddy taking huge damage in response, managing to get a little bit more damage on the puppet as he goes down to the stagger distance and down goes the kill. Lodi dropping him down onto the ground and finishing, not managing to finish it off at the fire. He's not dead yet. There it goes. The revival ring would manage to keep on life for just a little bit longer, but not enough to matter. Down drops the gravity. Pink Teddy unfortunately misses it. Master Lodi and Pink Teddy taking a Gunplay approach to this as opposed to the last round where we saw them diving into melee combat. Now these competitors are taking it at a distance and not Indeed. rushing head first into each other. They might be trying to wear down each other's mana as Master Lodi takes aim. Pink Teddy laying down another gravity trap. Seemingly laying down without rhyme or reason as the circle is going to make both of these traps completely useless. <sighs> Down comes the fire, though, as Pink Teddy starts to make his way in, taking half of his health and damage in response. Master Lodi being pressured in by the zone as the teleport comes down, but Pink Teddy is not going to be able to take advantage of that. Unfortunately, missing the fire to knock Lodi back into the zone as Pink Teddy swings at the air, taking heavy damage and rushing in a little bit closer. Lodi switches over to the sword and manages to land some huge damage, forcing Teddy into the zone, but not managing to finish him off as Teddy starts to rush away, hitting a huge fire that Lodi uses the shield to, ma to manage to uh, control his dash through. Pink Teddy and, Let and Master Lodi exchanging some heavy sword play, and Teddy walking away with the second first placement in a row. Unreal. Take Teddy, I believe, ties his score there, but puts down some unreal sword play at the end, dodging left and right. Lodi does his best, impression of a warrior, but unfortunately, Pink Teddy comes away with the win there. Congratulations, Pink Teddy, two games in a row, showing what the warrior is here to do.
it is very tricky when you get down to those high tense situations with the there is a function with the melee combat and once you hit an enemy with the melee it might cancel out their combo depending on factors so um, master Lodi falling unfortunate victim to that as the combo from pink teddy cinches the wind yeah and we see the current uh leaders up on the score as i said pink teddy's gonna tie his score of 12 points i will tally up the rest of the scores as you can see them on the lower screen there 